this is what we'll have at the end of the tutorial. We can type in an input and hit the validate button and we'll be told if our data is valid or not. If this is what you're looking for, you should continue watching. Greetings! It's Maxo Diddly here and today I am going to be showing you how to get user input using a JFrame in Java. So let's get right into it. Firstly, make sure you import these libraries up here. We'll be needing these for this tutorial. So firstly, we need to do public class, then the name of your class. Mine's going to be user input JFrame input field. And then we need to do extends JFrame. This line defines a new class and inherits from the JFrame class, meaning we can now use all of the functionality of the Java JFrame class in this user input JFrame input field class, the one that we're making. Then we're going to make a couple of global variables. We're going to do private JTEX field input field and private J button validate button. So these lines declares private global variables. One's going to be of the type JTEX field and the other's going to be of the type J button. So this is this variable will store our input field where we're going to be able to type our input and this variable is going to store the button that we're going to click which will then check what's in the field and validate it. So now we're going to make a function. It's going to be public. Then it, this bit of text here is going to be the exact same as what's here because we're going to be creating a constructor method which is the method that's called when we create an instance of a class. So when we run the program, when we create our new JFrame we're going to be running this function. So the first line of code we're going to do inside of here is set title, epic length check app. So this is going to set the title of our application, which you can see in the top of the window. Then we're going to do set size. We're going to do 300 by 100. This sets the size of the JFrame window to be 300 pixels wide by 100 pixels tall. You can customize this to whatever you want. Then we're going to do set default close operation jframe.exit on close. This tells the program to close and exit when the user clicks on the close button on the jframe window, the little x in the top right corner. Then we're going to do set layout new flow layout. This line sets the layout manager to use the jframe to a new flow layout object. Flow layout is a simple layout manager that places components in a left to right flow wrapping the next row when no more space is available. It's used here for simplicity and ease of use. Then we're going to do input field equals new JTEX field 15. This initializes the input field variable to a new JTEX field with a width for 15 columns. And then we're going to do validate button equals new J button validate. And this line initializes the validate button variable to a new J button with validate as the text in the button. Now we've got a little function here inside of our constructor method. So I'm going to break it down to you. We're going to do validate button dot add action listener, new action listener, curly bracket, and then an at override. So this part here, this line adds an action listener to the validate button, which listens for when the button is clicked. This is necessary for handling button clicks and responding to user input. So now our button is going to have the ability to know that it's been clicked. Then we're going to do at override. And at override is an annotation that indicates that the following method will override a method from a superclass or an interface. It's used here to show that the action performed method is part of the action listener interface. So basically by default in Java, there is a function to, that will execute when a certain action occurs, like when you click on a button, and then some code's executed. What we can do is we can take that function, override it, and put our own code inside to customize what happens when a button is clicked. So then we do public void action performed action event E. So this line starts the implementation of the action performed method for the action listener. This method will be called when the button is clicked allowing the program to respond to user input. And then we're going to do if length check validate input field dot get text, j option pain dot show message dialog null valid input, 
validation result, jopchampagne.information message. So, we're going to be creating a length check function here, which is going to be our form of validation. But you can put in whatever validation function you want to here. This will work with basically all of my Java validation tutorials. And we're going to be passing in input fields dot get text. So this is referencing our input field here, and we're going to be getting the text out of it as a string and passing it into our validation function, which returns a true or a false. If true, it's valid. So we can do a J option pane to tell the user that it's valid. And we can do J option pane dot information message to be a little fancy. However, we can have an else statement here. And in that else statement, what we can do is we can do j .show message dialog null invalid input. Input must have at least six characters. Then we can do validation result here and validation result here. The this little string here is going to be the little bit of text in the top of the j option pane. Well, this is going to be the message. And then we can do j option pane dot error message to have a little exclamation mark as an image to be like yo, you've done something wrong. Pay attention, be alert, that type of thing. Underneath uh, all of this, we are then going to do add input field and add validate button. So these lines just add our input field and validate button into our J frame. Then we're going to do set location relative to and null. This line centers the J frame on the screen and set visible true shows the J frame because by default it's hidden. And so we have set up a J frame with buttons to do stuff. And so we have now set up our J frame with a button and a text field. However, we need to make our validate function. So underneath, we're going to do private boolean length check validate string input. And we then do return input.length greater than or equal to six. So it's a boolean because it returns a true or false. Length check validate is the name of the function. And string input is the string we want to check the length of. So if the length is greater than or equal to six, return true, otherwise you return false. Very simple validation. You can put whatever validation function you want here, by the way. And obviously we call it up here. Now let's go to our main method. So we've got a little bit of code in our main method. So obviously we've got our public static void main string args, cool. But we have a little bit of code. So we got swing utilities dot invoke new runnable at override public void run new user input jframe input field this is the name of the class up here by the way so what exactly is going on so this line here this line uses the swing utilities dot invoke later method to schedule the creation of our user input jframe input field object on the event dispatch thread this is important for thread safety in Java Swing applications and ensures that the user interface updates and interactions happen on the appropriate thread. It's just some safe Java stuff. Again, we're doing that override because you want to hijack what this run function would normally do by default. And the run function, this line starts the implementation of the run method for our runnable interface. The run method is where the creation and display of our JFrame object is going to occur. And inside you do new user input JFrame input field. This line creates a new instance of our user input JFrame input field class, which sets up the display, the window, and all of its components, which would be the button and the text field. And that's it for this tutorial. So we're going to save our work and hit play. So we've got our little title here. It gets a little cut off here, but we can drag in this around if we want to. And it says Le Epic Length Check App. We've got obviously our buttons like normal. We can move this about. Now let's type in Bob and we click validate and it's invalid. We got validation result up here and it says invalid input. Input must have at least six characters. And we have a little X here to be like warning, be alert, pay attention to this. So let's put Bobby 69. And now it says valid input with a little I here because it's an information message. So thanks for being a great audience. Be sure to leave a like and a comment if you enjoyed and subscribe for more Java tutorials. Thanks for watching.